U.S. Army revealed the new Army tank, the M1A3 Abrams. Instead of seeking the elusive holy grail of lightweight armor or laser weaponry, technologies that would justify the development of a whole new tank, the Army would be better served by actively pursuing a substantial redesign and enhancement program for the Abrams, an M1A3. Want to know more? Hey guys, welcome to our channel, Alpha Tanks, where we tell you about military tanks, from the most famous World War II battle tanks to the most advanced battle tanks at present. But before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our incredible videos in the future. Let's get started! A man's reach, as poet Robert Browning famously observed, should transcend his grasp. This proverb should be applied to the creation of a future tank in general. However, common sense must be applied during the modernization process. Until a material revolution occurs, the Army must capitalize on the potential residing in the Abrams. The United States Army is looking for a variety of new technologies to use in designing and building new armored fighting vehicles, particularly a replacement for the long-serving Bradley. Despite its desire for a new tank, the Army lacks the crucial technology that it would justify the time and money spent on such an endeavor. Furthermore, it is not required to exert any effort. The Abrams, the Army's current main battle tank, is the tank for the future. This was first introduced in June. The Army is only now receiving the first of the latest Abrams modifications, the System Enhancement Package Version 3, with more upgrades in the works. Instead of seeking the elusive holy grail of lightweight armor or laser weaponry, technologies that would justify the development of a whole new tank, the Army would be better served by actively pursuing a substantial redesign and enhancement program for the Abrams and M1A3. The U.S. Army is interested in changing how and with what it battles. They are especially interested in new armored fighting vehicles, and not simply another family of metal boxes with a turret and cannon. Many technology enthusiasts, including many in the Army's new Futures Command, were poetic about the possibilities for hover tanks that discharge laser beams and are autonomously guided by artificial intelligence contained in quantum computers. Brigadier General Ross Kaufman, the leader of the Next Generation Combat Vehicle Cross-Functional Team in charge of the Bradley replacement in a future tank, is determined to go beyond the box when it comes to what a future tank would look like and what capabilities it might have. It might not be a tank, according to General Kaufman. The CFT has considered anything from a ray gun to a Star Wars-inspired four-legged creature that shoots lasers. But in actuality, everything is on the table. We need to break free from the idea that definitive lethality must come from a tank. The main issue with this idea is that some in the Army want to make a decision on a new tank before 2023. Fortunately, cooler heads, particularly the Chief of Staff, Gerald Mark Milley, understand that it makes no sense to pursue a new main battle tank designed from scratch until the necessary technologies are ready. This includes developing a new material from which to create vehicle armor. As General Milley recently stated, the actual holy grail of technologies that I'm looking for on this thing is the armor itself. If we can find a material that is much lower in weight while still providing the same armor protection, that would be a huge breakthrough. It is undergoing extensive research and development. Indeed, there has been progress in the development of materials that have the same or great ballistic protection as modern steel, but way less. Although advanced ceramics hold promise, the costs remain prohibitively high. University researchers have developed a composite metal foam that weighs less than half the amount of rolled homogeneous steel armor required to provide the same level of protection. Unfortunately, the foam can only be used to halt small arms. The solution to the Army's challenge of maintaining decisive lethality in its main battle tank for the next few decades is to continue the process of upgrading what is still the best tank in the world, the Abrams. Since its introduction in 1980, the Abrams tank has seen near constant modifications and advancements. Every seven years, on average, a new improvement package is introduced. Today, essentially little from the original vehicle remains in the most modern Abrams version. The M1A2 SEPV3 update will increase the vehicle's lethality, survivability, responsiveness, power generation, sustainability, and maintainability. The Army launched a program to create the new Abrams variant, the A3. The Army aims for two things. First and foremost, the Abrams tank's weight should be reduced. With all the new features, the tank now weighs slightly under 80 tons. Making the Abrams lighter is as simple as developing an autoloader turret. This would cut the crew number by one and free up space, allowing the turret to be lighter while still providing for an advanced weapon system or other capabilities. 
The Army should begin financing for auto loader turret research and development to help speed up the development of an M1A3 upgrade. Second, the Abrams should serve as a sensing platform as well as a shooter. The Abrams A3 should serve as a platform for advanced sensors and electronic systems. On a future SCP update, the Army was already planning to include a third-generation forward-looking infrared sensor. An advanced active protection system based on a fully developed requirement might be added to this. The Abrams has, or will soon have, additional sensors that, when completely integrated, will provide the crew with a comprehensive tactical operational picture. To reduce crew workload and improve performance, the Army should investigate ways to incorporate autonomy into the A3 model. The Abrams is unique in that it can threaten opposing tanks with both chemical energy, with high explosive anti-tank rounds, and kinetic energy, with SABO rounds, confounding the opponent's defensive attempts. The 120mm gun of the M1 is highly accurate and devastating, although it is limited to engaging line-of-sight targets out to a range of around 5 kilometers. The addition of a new medium-range, non-line-of-sight munition for that gun would significantly increase the engagement area, allowing more dispersed Abrams troops to exert influence across more territory. Such rounds would likely cost more than those now fired from the M1, but they may be less expensive than using a precise munition from an airplane when launch platform operational costs are considered. Furthermore, a medium-range engagement capability would improve survivability by allowing the Abrams to engage from beyond the range of most anti-armor threats on the ground. The development of a variety of smaller and less expensive precision munitions, notably for use on drones, over the last decade may have reduced the risk of developing a precision round for the M1. In 2008, the U.S. Army awarded a development contract for the XM-1111 mid-range munition in collaboration with the FCS program. The Fire and Forget XM-1111, with a proposed maximum range of at least 12 kilometers, would have allowed an M1 to engage targets over an area nearly six times bigger than conceivable with today's 5-kilometer engagement range. However, the Army discontinued the XM-1111 program in May 2009 as part of the overall FCS program's demise. Extended Range Cannon Artillery with Automated Ammunition Handling System gives 155mm artillery systems with lethality overmatch by offering extended range capabilities with greater accuracy and increased rates of fire for both self-propelled and towed howitzers. Urca will be able to achieve lethality overmatch at extended ranges while using lightweight, high-strength materials, structures, and sophisticated manufacturing techniques for the cannon, mount, and autoloader. When combined with simultaneously produced ammunition, the system will be able to achieve greater ranges than current capabilities while being compatible with the current modular artillery charge system pushing charge. And that's it for today, guys. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button and share it with your friends and family. And if you have any questions or comments, please share them with us in the comment space below. Make sure you don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel too to see even more of our incredible videos. And you can always check out other videos that have been specially selected for you, and we'll catch up in the next video.